Hello, welcome to my first pattern review. I know it's been a while since I posted um, my purchases from the Gold Hook Road, but I have got some of the items that I was hoping to make made, um, as well as a couple of other things that I wanted to show you. So firstly, I've been taking part in Me Made May, um, as some of you will know who follow my Instagram um, feed. And as part of that, the sun has decided it wants to come out. And most of the garments that I've made recently are sort of autumn winter things. So I've had to quickly make a few summer bits. So I've had to deviate away from some of my gold hook road makes for the time being. And I thought I'd show you about some of the two things I have made in the meantime. So the first one um, is the ultimate trouser pattern um, by Sew Over It. I bought this initially to try um, making the trousers with um, the black and rose print cotton stretch that I bought from the Gold Hook Road. I am going to do that. I've got um, a date with a friend in a couple of weeks to try the pattern out for trousers and I'll make those then. But in the meantime, I had a go at the city shorts, um, which are here. Um, they looked to be fairly long, so I thought that would be good for work. Um, and when I was in my local fabric shop, I picked up the most fantastic um, sparkly stretch denim. Um, again, if you follow my Instagram, you'll have seen my little video where I showed the spangle in the fabric and um, everyone got very excited. So I made these, I'll show you. So as you can see, they're just above the knee. Um, they're fairly long. I have to admit, I didn't turn these up as much as the pattern suggests. Because I wanted them to be a bit more decent for work. I've only turned them up by um, about four um, on the outside and two on the inside. The pattern says four centimetres and then four centimetres again. So they're not as turned up, but they're quite decent. They've got a nice little side zip um, feature, um, which is nice and comfortable. And they do fit really nicely. Um, they are quite snug. Um, around here that's I've got fairly large thighs to be honest so that's going to be something <laughs> you'll either love them or paint them in that respect um but as far as the sewing pattern goes really really nice to work with um relatively clear instructions I would say you would need to have made something um before um certainly know how to insert a visible zip um etc etc the pattern doesn't tell you how to do that but it just tells you that you need to do it um so it's nice a nice pattern i'll certainly make these again i can see these being a staple in my wardrobe and they do fit really really nicely so i'm going to go and quickly put on something else that i've made um and then you can have a little look so i'm back again the sun's come out um so i'm not sure what the light's going to be like i'm filming today from home in my conservatory um it's quieter here the children aren't here the phone's not going to ring people aren't going to deliver packages but I'm wondering if it might be a bit too sunny for you, but we'll see. So I'm now going to show you my next summer make. This is the Christine Haynes um, Sylvie pattern. It's been in my stash for a long while. I've been meaning to try it. I'm a big fan of Christine Haynes pattern. I particularly like her emery pattern and I've made that lots of times before. Um, the thing that was putting me off this is that it's got a bound neckline and bound armholes. It's not something I particularly like in a dress or a garment. Um, I do prefer a facing and I think if I was going to make it again and uh, then I would just sketch myself out a basic facing and pull the garment through. Um, but saying that, it is a really, really lovely dress. It fits beautifully. It's got a lovely fitted bodice, a nice um, scoop neck kind, not too revealing, but nice for the summer. I love the waistband feature. It's something I would never have thought to wear before I, I got to the size I am now, um, but it is very, very flattering. It sits right the way across your tummy and the gathers go in just underneath the waistband. The thing I love most about this dress is its big pockets. They're absolutely fantastic. For an everyday dress, um, I can go on the school run and know I've got my mobile and my car keys in my pockets. I can just get in the car and off I go. Um, so it is really great from that respect. It's a nice length. I think if I stand on my tippy toes, you can probably see. It's below the knee. Obviously, you could make it shorter if you wanted to, um, but I don't really like showing off my knees. Um, nice and visible back zip in the back. And again, the waistband goes all the way around, so it's, it's really nice and fitted and structured. I wore this to my friend's daughter's third birthday party yesterday, and it was a, a good sitting out in the garden drinking with friends' dress. Um, and I know I'm going to get lots of wear out of it. The fabric I picked up a couple of years ago from a shop in Chelmsford. Um, I'm not even sure if it's there anymore, um, but I'll put the link to that down in the comments. 
So yeah, fantastic dress, love the Sylvie. Um, instructions as per all of Christine's patterns are really easy to follow. I do admit I put the waistband in upside down. I didn't realise that until I'd finished the dress and tried it on and I had a, a baggy bit right here. Um, I couldn't bring myself to unpick it all again, so I do admit to putting it on inside out and just whizzing down the side seams, which is cheating. But those of you that make their own clothes know that probably quite a few garments in your wardrobe don't look fantastic on the inside. But they look great from the outside and that's what matters. And I know where I went wrong, so I won't do it again. So I'm going to go and get changed again. I've got two more um, patterns to show you and three more garments in total, so I'll see you in a sec. Okay, next up is the Sew Over It Anderson blouse. You can see that there. Um, the Sew Over It Anderson is a PDF pattern, so it needed downloading and sticking together. And that's where the lovely Alice came in. She's doing work experience with us at the moment um, and doing a fantastic job. And she was learning how to stick together PDF patterns, so I was lucky. Um, and had that done for me. The Anderson blouse is designed to be made in a floaty fabric, um, a chiffon or viscose, um, a crepe, something along those lines. Um, but recently, uh, Lisa Comfort, who runs so over it, did a vlog about a jersey version that she'd made. Um, she didn't really like it, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I thought it was very 80s, and I liked the 80s style, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, I think I mentioned in my Gold Talk Road vlog earlier on um, that I'd bought this nice black jersey crepe. I've never worked with it before, um, and it was nice to work with. It wasn't super slippy. It's got just enough structure in it um, to sew together without it slipping and sliding, and but it drapes really nicely. I'm really pleased with this, although I have to admit there are areas of the pattern that I'm not quite so um, pleased with. I think it comes up really big. I made the 12. I know the sleeves are supposed to be quite billowy, um, and you probably could have tightened the cuffs up a bit more um, to make them more billowy. Had I made it before I tried it in jersey, I probably wouldn't have bothered with the cuffs. I'd have just put a um, wristband on them, um, because you don't really need... Um, all the detail there but I've just stitched a little button on um, I haven't bothered with a buttonhole because it's just not necessary I can get my hands in and out so it's kind of like a fake cuff uh, the waistband I added um, you're supposed to have a tie and um, run through the bottom to tie it up but because it's a jersey fabric I thought it'd be quite nice to put a waistband on and I just gathered it into the waistband and um, the waistband I've actually pinched from a sweatshirt pattern that I'm going to show you in a minute so I am pleased with it. I think I'll get quite a lot of wear out of it. It's got this nice um, gathered detail at the shoulders, and if you can see that. Um, but they're all sort of gathered in at the shoulders. Um, inside, um, in the front here, there's a really nice facing. Um, so yeah, it, it drapes nicely. I've put a tiny little stitch in here just to hold it together um, because it is quite gapy. And I have actually got a vest top on underneath as well because when you bend over, it is quite booby. Uh, but I think I will get quite a lot of wear out of this. It's a nice sort of going down the pub on a Friday night with friends um, for a drink top. I think I'd like to make it again properly in the drapey fabric as a blouse and see how that turns out. Um, I did go wrong, I have to admit, putting the shoulder facing in. I think, again, it, it comes down to having made things in the past and what you read into a pattern with regards to the instructions and the description. I think a beginner would really struggle with this. Um, and as soon as I sewed it, I realised where I'd gone wrong. Um, and I kind of put my facings in old school style and hand stitched them down. Um, I couldn't understand the instructions until after I'd done it. And then it sort of got the light bulb moment and it came together. Um, what I will say for the Sew Over It patterns is that the pictures aren't particularly clear. It doesn't help that they've used a fabric that's the same on the right side and the wrong side. So it's actually really hard when you're looking at a photograph to see what you should be sewing right sides to, together or wrong sides together. Um, and that's where I fell down, um, especially since I was too making it with a fabric that didn't have a right side or a wrong side. And I did get completely lost at one point, but we got there in the end. I do like it, and um, it's certainly wearable. I think it will get quite a lot of wear in my wardrobe. Not one of my favourites, but I will try it again um, just to, to see how I get on. So 
So the last thing I want to show you um, is my sweatshirt. This is um, a new look pattern. It's a new look 6314. Um, I tried this one recently, um, having seen it on a stand at the Olympia Knitting and Stitch Show. I really liked um, a sweatshirt. It was on the Fabrics Galore stand, and I asked them what pattern they'd used. And I then um, bought myself some fabulous cat print jersey to try it out with. And um, I've subsequently now made three of these, so I'm going to go and put them on so I can show you, and then I'll talk you through. So this pattern. is my little cat sweatshirt. This was the fabric um, that I bought from Fabrics Galore at the Knitting and Stitch show. I decided just to do the front in the cat, um, and the back, and the sleeves, waistband, and neckband are all done in a plain grey jersey. Um, I didn't want to make it too bright and blingy. It's a lovely fabric. It's not really sweatshirt fabric in the truest sense of the word. It's more of a lightweight jersey. So you can wear it at this time of year um, without getting too hot as a top rather than as a jumper over a top. Uh, so I do really like it. It's ever so comfortable. It fits really nicely and it's an absolute doddle to make up. So much so that we are actually going to be running a class. Um, at the studio how to make these sweatshirts so I'll put the link for that down in the comments um, if you want to book so get looking out for some really nice sweatshirt fabric or jersey fabrics that you want to work with you just want something with a bit of structure it doesn't have to be particularly heavy it doesn't have to be fleecy um, anything that's, that's basically not going to slip and slide and, and float about will work for you um, and you want to have the same weight for your um, main panel as you would do for your arms and sleeves. So I've done two more of these. I'm just going to go and get them and show you. I don't think I need to put them on. Um, they're just over here. So the first one is um, with the fabric that I bought at the Gold Hawk Road. Um, it is super layery. It's very 80s-tastic, but I do love it. Um, I've worn this to a couple of networking meetings, and I certainly you know, stood out from the crowd. It is really cool, and they're so easy to make. Once you cut them out, which takes about half an hour, you can whiz them together really quickly. Um, and I've done mine on my overlocker, so it's even quicker. Now, this fabric, I don't think I've shown you this one before. I bought this um, when I was on holiday recently with the children in Yarmouth. And it's a really funny fabric. It's hard to explain. It's kind of like a knit. It's very soft, like a soft cashmere jumper. But it is a jersey, and it has got quite a bit of stretch in it. But it's ever so comfortable. And I've done my neckband and my waistband and my cuffs in just um, the same black jersey that I used to edge my um, 80s one in, my fluoro one. The only thing with this is I didn't buy quite enough fabric. I didn't have the pattern with me when I was away. And so I didn't, wasn't able to cut the back and the front out on the fold. So you'll see I have got a seam all the way down the back. Um, but you can get away with that on these sweatshirts. I just made sure that when I cut it out, I added five eighths um, and then joined it together. So I turned it into one piece. So I do really like that. Pattern's fantastic. As I say, you can, you can book on and do that with us as a class if you want to. Um, that's all I've got to show you this month. I've got quite a few bits and pieces I'm still working on from my Gold Hawk Road video. And then I think what I must do is go through all my drawers and find all my fabrics that I've been stashing away and look at what I can perhaps make with those um, before I go out and buy any more new fabric. So that's me for now. Um, hopefully I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Stop and smell the flowers